All right, without further ado, let's get things started here. Hello, welcome to You Don't Know Jack, The Ride. How many of you are there? Just the one. Nobody else to play with? Well, who needs them? It's Sir Wallace, not mine. Is this your first time riding with us? No, it is not. Excellent. It's always great to play with experienced professionals. <laughs> now I will ask you to type in your name. Go ahead. Thanks a lot. As you know, your buzzer is the key with the B on it. Enjoy the ride. See you at the bottom. 369. Nice. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack, The Ride, is brought to you by Cloverbia, suburban community living with only the people you like. And now, please welcome the one, the only, Schmitty. Hey there, how you doing? No, I don't know. I what do you want to do gifts. today? You want to just hang out at the mall? Okay. <laughs> so, we don't need no Mall of America amusement park. We got a ride right here. Hang on tight. Okay. Buzz in and lock up. The category's gonna be... Yeah, it could be better. But suburbia is our cultural wasteland. Okay, say you're a mother in the suburbs with three screaming kids and no help from your husband. Isn't that always the way? Well, bottle sure. up your anger and imagine this. You send your kids out to play in the cul-de-sac. If you translate the phrase directly into English, what should you say? Go play in the cream of the man. Go play in the long nostril. Go play in the ass of the bag. Or... Go play in the old rooster. I'm gonna guess. Sack means bag and cull means bottom, or in slang, ass. But if you're skateboarding, be careful you don't wipe out in the ass. Oh, okay, bad. we got you, we got you. Say no more, man. Slap your butt. I'm calling this one. Will someone please think of the suburban children? Okay, the census tells us that households in the suburbs have two parents, a house, two cars, a dog, and 2.5 kids, right? Well, if everyone in town has just half a kid in their family, who is probably in charge? King David, King Solomon, King Arthur, or King Midas? That would be King Solomon. King Solomon is the wise biblical king who's famous for settling a custody battle by suggesting a baby be cut in half so two different women could share it. It's a great story. Look it up. It's not a real popular custody ruling in the suburbs because, you know, it's tough to get half a kid into a good preschool these days. Buzzy, coming at you. Honey, I shrunk the yuppies. Sure you did. Okay, so first there were young urban professionals we called yuppies, right? Then there were buppies, and now we got dinks. Well, if you buy shrinky dinks, what demographic will you be coloring and then shrinking in the oven? Working unwed mothers, unemployed couples with kids, teenagers with driver's licenses, or working couples without kids? I think it's working couples without kids. Dink is an acronym kids. for double income, no kids. And the shrinky part is a dink's dream. Low cost plastic surgery. Buzz in. Roadkill time. All right, that could have gone better, to be honest with you. Don't forget, smack that buzzer to grab the item that correctly unites the two items on the screen. And we got a bonus question at the end that could mean even more cash. Okay, it's time to punch it. Famous Dolphin and Scuba Footwear. What do these two items have in common? Flipper. Um, Archery equipment and discount door chain. Oh, it's Target, I bet. Score! Full speed equals full blank and jousting tournament. It 
way to help if I actually got this right here. Tilt. Tilt. Toilet tool? And person who dives from tall buildings. Plunger. Score. Yeah. Students want extra blank and fine with plastic. Credit. Score. 20 years and get laid. Score. Score. Car vendor and excess crops. Bumper. Score. Okay, shifting okay, gears into bonus. Target, what plunger. do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all pickball machine terms? Yeah, they got is. it. Video game? Let go of the 70s. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a good Check pinball score game. There. Make sure you just don't know, Schmitty. You on. just don't know. Hit that. The category is... Skinny dipping is an exhibition sport. Ashley you know, most Quinn. people think pool hopping is just jumping in and out of some stranger's pool and running off to the next one. But I'm telling you, it takes skill and training, like any sport. Suppose pool hopping were part of the modern pentathlon. Which of the following would Olympic athletes not do between dips in the pool? Mount a horse, fence, ride a bicycle, or shoot a pistol? Pentathlon does not feature bike riding. The modern pentathlon includes swimming, fencing, shooting, running, and riding horses, not bikes. So after they jump in their neighbor's pool, they'd also be able to leave flaming bags of horse duty on their front porches. Ah, you... Alright, that'll work just fine. Tell me what you think of this category. Fake vomit! Get your fake vomit here! Look no further, here's your question. If ubiquitous novelty store Spencer Gifts had been founded by historical figure Herbert Spencer, what would its ad slogan most likely be? Fundies are only for the aristocracy. Only the fittest lava lamps will survive. All Garfield mugs were created equal. Or, I read fart joke books, therefore I am. Okay, I think of those maybe just the one. Two-person underwear only for the aristocracy? Long live the revolution! <laughs> no. So you don't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> Herbert Spencer is the guy who coined the phrase survival of the fittest. Then Darwin used it and got all famous. Darwin also likes to take credit for Spencer's classic snake popping out of the peanut can gag. Okay, okay. I want you to hit your buzzer. That'll work. Try this category. Look for the gold blazers and cloven hooves. Hey, take a look at this real estate listing, will you? When you know what town the house is in, buzz in, start typing. For sale, three-story house on Long Island. At first, you won't believe your eyes. Great for those who enjoy oozing walls, restless flies, and slamming doors. Ghostly pigs, okay. Now, where's the house? This could do it, type it. That Long Island dream house with the bleeding walls, swarms of flies, and the little phantom pig running around? Yeah. It's in Amityville. And as long as you can swing an axe, it's the perfect fixer-upper. Hey, Work that buzz. Hey, that's pretty lame. Let's try I, this unpopular category. Unpopular opinion time. I kind of like the Ryan Reynolds sequel Fute? over the original. Okay, you know that store in the mall, Orange Julius? And you can get like an orange Julius or a strawberry Julius sure, or a sure. banana, you know, whatever freaking Julius you want. If orange Julius added even more fruits to its menu, which of these drinks could it not offer? Acorn Julius, onion Julius, tomato Julius, or pea Julius? Oh boy, um, I'm gonna guess pea? Peas are actually fruits. Very what? watery, yellow-green fruits. <laughs> okay, now here's a good answer. An onion isn't a fruit, so an onion Julius would be out of the question. An onion Julius? No way! Wild scallions couldn't make me drink one of those. Ooh, the pun was right. strong with that this one. This one's called... You just got geekier. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you remember sitting in the orthodontist chair when you were a kid? All those elastic bands and headgear and the nope. cool mockery of I kinda ears? wish I had, but or I never maybe did. maybe that was just me. Anyway. 
If you'd been forced to wear mathematical braces, what would be in your mouth? These, 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 or these? Mathematical. I think it would be three. Those are brackets. And they're my brackets, so keep them out of your mouth. Oh. I could have given you some cash if you picked this two, one. It? These mathematical symbols are called braces. And trust me, they look really gross when they get corn stuck in them. I'll take your word for it, I guess. The buzzer for the you chose wisely. Brace yourself, my friend. It's time for Dis or Dat. Here's the category for your Dis or Dat. This is your brain on suburbia. Now, I'm going to list off seven brand names. And for each one, I'd like you to tell me if it's a type of minivan or a brand of drug. Minivan or drug. Cash in for each one you get right, and you lose cash if you get one incorrect or don't get to it. You gotta get all seven of them in 30 seconds. Here we go. Astro, van, or drug? Astro's a van. Axel. It's a drug. So off. So off's a drug. Silhouette. Silhouette's a van. Effexor. Drug. Trevia. Drug. Oh. Adivan. Right, that's nice job, soldier. You only missed one. Yeah. Here's your current score. I could score. be doing so Feel much good about that? Let's keep going. Buzz in and tell me how much the... Well, that's hardly worth my time. Let's try this category. Rough housing at the Target. <laughs> hey, listen up. We're going to play a little game of darts here. Well, not really. Just... Okay, to keep score, let's say that the bullseye is worth 10 points, the ring around that is worth 9, and moving outwards, each ring is worth one less than the one inside it. You got it? Sure. How many points would you get for hitting the outermost ring in a Target Store logo? 7, 8, 9, or 10? I think it's 8. The Target logo has a bullseye and two rings. If the score goes down a point for each ring, you got 8 points. Nice shooting text. That'll really come in handy when you're out throwing big gulps at neighborhood children. <laughs> Buzz in and lock up. Whoa, nice shooting. And this category is... You say acid wash, I say frosted denim. Okay, you remember how acid wash jeans used to be all the rage? All right then. Kind of. Suppose Bugle Boy introduces a new line of nitric acid wash jeans. What will be the best way to advertise them? Make your friends green with envy. Blows the pants off the competition. Become immune to bad fashion. Or wear nitric them for a acid. great trip. I, uh... Nitric acid is used in explosives. Hey, there we go. Which means my jeans must be nitric acid wash. Because I blew them out last week after chili night. Okay. Get that. Some clues are a brush off, and well, some clues are like this one. We're going to the mall. Where's my comb? It's right in the back pocket of those tight jeans, honey. I can see the individual freaking teeth on it, okay? <laughs> Alrighty. Breakfast cereal is honeycombs. Horsebrush is a I have no clue. That's Sean Combs. A catacomb. There we go. That's a cone of beach color. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Answer over is a comb over, and it does not work. Ah! 
It's a curry comb. Got it. That's a cox comb. Got it. And we just missed two at the end. Ah, oh, you missed just one! Can you imagine how exciting that would have been if somebody else were playing? It's okay. I've done better. Tickets for her and a friend to a Spice Girls concert, $80. An autographed jersey of his favorite athlete, $240. The latest video game system, $150. Surveillance photos of their mom's new boyfriend with another woman, $400. Every other weekend of your children's undying love, priceless. Okay. Got it. Money can't. Alright, this was the Superbia Mall episode of You Don't Know Jack the Ride. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to leave a comment in the section below. And uh, be sure to subscribe and spread the word. We'll see you again here on Tickets